we're really working on bringing a lot of our content into the virtual space. And so ACCFI Presents is our first time where we're getting a chance to really interact with our local designers and really communicate with them about all the different um, things that they're going through during this timeline, um, but also finding other ways um, for them to engage um, with us as a fashion incubator, but then as the, as, as the fashion industry as a whole. So we're really looking forward to talking with Pamela Torres today. Um, we're so happy to have you uh, to talk with you about how your um, how your business is going. We want to get to know about your business, um, and then how sales have been, how you've been navigating sales kind of in this pandemic. Uh, you know, this is a very unique time. So, um, without any further ado, guys, I want to introduce you to Pamela. She's a mom. She's an entrepreneur. Um, she's um, a professional, um, and she has an incredible brand called Classic Childhood. Uh, so Pamela, welcome. Could you tell us a little bit about your brand? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm in my garage, so I have a toddler as well. So he's <laughs> <laughs> um, excuse the background. Um, my brand um, is a sustainable brand for children, and uh, we are very into circular fashion. We like to um, take uh, button-up shirts and then transform them into baby clothes. And we have regular clothes, but uh, this is mainly what, uh, this is my passion, like doing the full cycle and then having these uh, special pieces. We have custom orders where we get this um, shirt from grandpa who passed away and then uh, we make a baby romper and it's a special piece for the new baby in the family. So um, this is like, that's the core of uh, my business. That's awesome. So, um, you know, with a focus on children's wear, um, did you find there to be kind of a natural gravitation to children's wear specifically? Or like what made you specifically choose to go into children's wear versus women's wear or men's wear? Well, um, yeah, like definitely like when I uh, became a mother, I had my son and I was like uh, very into it and into fashion and I want him to look very nice and um and then this style that I like the classic style that I really like I couldn't really find it here and uh I started making things my own and that's pretty much how I started it was uh with my son and then using my husband's uh shirts they were wonderful fabrics you know just like a wrinkle-free fabric and easy to work with so that's pretty much how I started Wow. Wow. I, I love, sto I love brands that are connected to, um, kind of like your personal reasons of why you get started doing things and, you know, connected to something that's, you know, close to the heart, like family. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about just kind of, you know, the whole point of our talk today is really about navigating sales during these uncertain times. So, you know, I'd love to kind of just walk through your journey with you about what the last, you know, roughly eight to 12 weeks has looked like for you kind of in this climate, um, kind of where did you start? And then, you know, where do you see things, you know, right now? And then kind of what are you hoping for, you know, in the future? Well, uh, yeah, like for sure, like a lot of our, a big percentage of our sales comes from markets and we're out there and we try to uh, be out there and by the, virus crisis, we were not allowed to go out. And um, it was kind of surprising. And um, I was very concerned, to be honest, because I have a seamstress and uh, she depend on, on what we make and all that. So it's kind of mm -hmm. hard. But um, the first, uh, the, like the first week, I was like, okay, just like, let's focus on, on, on the, on the website, and then just like improve and Try to do the things better. Like um, uh, we were working on the on, on our template um, to introduce videos, so you can see the product and just like put videos there and show it in every product description. So there's a lot of things that you can do to, in order to improve your uh, your revenue, but it's um, you have to put money on it. So it's kind of you know it's just like yeah, I want more sales, but I have to put money up front, etc. And um, and it was funny because then I have this uh, friend and then she sent me an email and she was like, you know, Dell Medical Center is needing masks. 
and uh, why don't you take it out and just probably help them? I was like, yeah, I, I don't mind, you know, so I have this free time. So I started making some and to donate them to the to the, med, the um, Dale Medical Center. And I did some and I just post um, something in Instagram and then I started getting messages like, when are you going to make for the children? And when I want a mask for children and stuff. But I was Excellent. Like, yeah, and I was feeling bad, and I was like, is there is such a need for these, and I was like, I shouldn't be selling them, you know, it's just like, I need to give them, but at the same time, is all this time consuming, I'm not getting any, any income, I have mm-hmm. these images there, you know, so, so it's like, okay, I told a friend, like, yeah, I'll make one for you, and then I promised another to other friends, you know, and I was like, okay, well, I'm probably gonna do something, so I put a promotion and I was like, uh, buy two, I, I don't. That's excellent. So, um, yeah, so it was like, it was a way to get income and uh, keep uh, my seamstress working mm-hmm. and then at the same time helping, you know, just like don't feeling like I was Absolutely. taking advantage of the situation. So, um, but yeah, so that's what, what I've been doing so far, and it went so well, surprisingly well, that I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> so, wow, so, wow, that's yeah. such an incredible yeah. thing. I'd, I'd love to kind of, I mean, just to kind of recap what you were saying though, I mean, one, to take your focus going from, you know, that in-person experience at a market um, or, you know, an event, and then to really enhance your e-commerce experience through video, you know, making kind of that initial investment to like ramp up, I mean, that's a huge opportunity there that I don't think a lot of emerging designers are utilizing as much. And video is really where we're going, you know, in a lot of the ways that we're reaching a customer. Um, but I think there's an opportunity there. And I know that sometimes that can be a bit cost prohibitive, you know, but I think that people, you know, it seems that the visualization of the product is really making a big difference, you know, in that space. But then, you know, you you really took the step to also be engaged with the community. And we really appreciate that you are willing to, you know, give, you know, to Delmed and these other places that are looking for support. Um, so much so that I think that the community embraces you back and says, thank you. We want to support people who support us, you know? Yeah. And I, and I get like every day I get like very nice messages from customers and uh, I'm still fulfilling orders from two weeks ago and it's it's really hard because uh, I didn't expect this and uh, I'm really trying hard like I don't know I just like sleep like three hours a day <laughs> and I'm just like you know just like um, someone came and uh, do the cuts and then the other lady takes the cuts and then sew them on and then sometimes I just go pick them up they drop them off uh, it's hard to control production in that way because we have to keep our distance and I mm-hmm. have to do like a training thing. It's, it's a very basic piece, but you know, just like it, it, if the seam allowance is not um, the same from one person to other person, it's going to variate on the product. But mm-hmm. um, I don't know, just like as the founder of um, LinkedIn say, he has something to say, if you're not embarrassed of your product, Ooh first version of your product you launch it so, so mm, wow so right yeah so yeah I was like, okay well probably my my first customers we we didn't give them the best uh quality of uh mask i think they were pretty good but now they're way better and the packaging yeah. is better and um you know it's like we're dealing with um all this mess of um there's less people at the uspas at ups and uh, Amazon is getting less people, so we're not getting really uh, products from mm-hmm. Amazon Prime like in two days. We have to wait more, way more. There's no uh, elastic. It's uh, hard to get the fabric sometimes. It's just like uh, we're dealing with a lot of um, uh, cows, and uh, some people don't understand it, but some people are very, uh, very understandable, and, and, and they're mm-hmm. understanding I meant to say, uh, and I don't know, at, at the end, it's, we are reacting to some need and then, uh, and then we're trying hard to help and we just can do what we can do, you know, just like some people um, appreciate it. And, and I feel good. I had 
I, I, by having all these orders, I have the opportunity to uh, employ two more ladies um, in addition to my seamstress, which I feel pretty good. These two ladies were unemployed due to the crisis. And I was like, well, they are making a living now at least for a month. You know, it's just like, I know this is a one time situation. It's temporarily, but, uh, but at least it's not this pressure that you have uh, from your family. So they have families, they have children. So right now they are able to to have some money, you know, to make some savings and get more ready for whatever it happens here. It's the thing. This is going to change, you know. We're not going to yes. be the same afterwards. And and even if the if the um, quarantine uh, it's over today, uh, I think we're going to keep keeping distance and at least for all this entire year, you know. Just so it's going to be hard. I agree. I agree. I think, um, you know, it's really important for us as designers to think about how we imagine life changing because that drastically changes what it is that we put out for the customer. And I just want to back up though. I am just so amazed that, that in the midst of the crisis that you're able to hire two other people. Um, you know, I think that a lot of people are asking, you know, stitchers and, you know, seamstresses to work for free because it's out of the goodness of their heart and that it's a volunteer kind of all hands on deck opportunity. But these are the same people who need to put food on their tables, you know, and so we appreciate volunteers and people who have, you know, the resources to be able to help without any compensation. But we know the reality is that people are losing their jobs as a result of the pandemic. And if they have other skills that can help them put food on the table or to take care of their bills, you know, this is a, a really meaningful work. And I hope that other businesses and designers and projects are taking note that, you know, you can't just look to lay, you know, people who have these skills as just labor or a free workforce, you know, that people really, you know, also need to make a, a living. So I just want to say kudos to you, you know, for, um, finding ways to bring people in, even if it's temporary, you know, that it's an opportunity for, for people to continue to bring in income. Um, but how incredible that you've been able to, you said over 2,000 orders? Is that what I heard you say? Or was it? Or was it? 2,000 masks. 2,000 masks. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Yeah. Whoa, that's huge. That's a lot of masks. That's a lot of little people being covered. And we know how cost can be on little time. <laughs> um, so thank you thank you to parents everywhere <laughs> from parents everywhere um uh, yeah and and, and I'm, I'm making i we have three sizes but uh of course children's masks are very popular even though the kids are really i mean they are just like you know resistant to wear them but if mm -hmm. you have an emergency it's very important to have one like if you're gonna run mm -hmm. to the hospital or someone or something you need to have your child prepared Absolutely. For you. You know, um, so uh, yeah, I'm 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 super happy, and it was a it, it's very challenging for me right now. But and, and then even like the customer experience, I have I want to respond to everyone. I want them to feel like I'm I'm listening, and uh, that's that's another side of the designing part is just the business part and getting in, in touch with the customer so they don't feel like you're not taking care of them. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm dealing with all these crises because we need to put production and then I'm fulfilling all the orders. I, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not getting anyone uh, in into my house to help me out. So production right. is one part of it. And then mm -hmm. I get the, the mask and then I have, you know, just like to pack them and then shape them and all the, all the fulfilling side and just like getting contact with the customers one by one, uh, most of the time, and then messages, Instagram, and dealing with all the social media, Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram, and then the email. So it's it's really it's really uh, hard, but it's a really great exercise. Um, mm -hmm. And definitely, like it, I've been tested for my passion to it, like mm -hmm. for my business. My mm -hmm. husband told me like a couple of days ago. He was like, "I don't know how you do it. Like you really are." very passionate about it because you just don't sleep you just rather be <laughs> doing these than sleeping and I'm like it's a temporary thing I just know it's a temporary thing mm -hmm. uh, I need to go out there I need to put a good worth on my business um, maybe some customers are not that happy I know that my husband they don't get it you know 
um, but uh, most of them are very happy with the, with their products and um, I think we have a great quality now. I feel pretty confident about the first shipping and um, that, that, that makes me, um, I mean, I'm fe- I, I feel pretty good about the whole thing, just like mm-hmm. having you know, more people on board and, you know, just like, trying to reinvent uh, my business and because uh, no one's buying clothes. It's like, we're not really, I mean, unless it's for pictures, you know, just like the Easter pictures. Uh, right. Easter pictures, we have some clothes. Yeah, but, uh, but you know, it's just like, we're not going out. So mm-hmm. It's just like, yeah. So it's really hard for designers uh, these days to keep that. Um, and I don't know, I don't know, it's, 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 we just need to reinvent ourselves and probably come back, uh, we're dating, um, by videos, you know, so yes. at least like I had, a, yeah, I had a couple of uh, parties already and we dressed up just to, oh, fun. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You got to find ways to connect with people. And I think that um, you're right. There isn't a lot of dressing. You know, if you think about like, even here, like I can, we can only see each other from the waist up, you know? <laughs> and so you're really like, okay, well, here's what you're getting. So we'll, you know, curate the top half, you know? Um, but yeah, you know, you're right. I think that just because fashion is such a disposable income kind of activity, if it's not something that we see as an absolute need, a lot of times, you know, we had talked about this in a previous um, town hall was that, you know, we're just seeing a lot of that disposable income, you know, shrinking, you know, in favor of, you know, focusing on other, you know, immediate needs, but the face coverings for children are so important. And so it really becomes an essential purchase again, you know, and so it's, it's wonderful to see you, you know, not just stay in the game, but stay connected to your customer. And I think that, you know, for better or worse, the dynamic of like, hey, let's talk to the customer on Instagram, let's talk to the customer over email, let's communicate with them in the packaging, let's, you know, there's all these opportunities to connect. And I think people are really hungry for that. And so there may be more communication now than normal because everyone's kind of sitting at home with not a lot of people to talk to. (laughs) So there may be a bit more dialogue, which could be an opportunity for emerging designers um, to get more dialogue from the customer. But in the meantime, it does put a a challenge um, of sorts of, you know, trying to get back to everyone, you know? So I hear you, I hear you. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. So we've got a few more, um, just a few more minutes left. Um, the 30 minutes just kind of flies by. I know we started a little bit late, so I think we might run, maybe maybe we'll keep going a few more minutes beyond 1030 just to kind of honor the amount of time that we were trying to, you know, provide to everyone in terms of content. Um, so I think that, um, you know, one of the things that I really you know, I'm curious, I've been reading a lot of different reports and stuff like that. Um, but I think sometimes when it's like actual businesses on the ground, like when you think about, you know, kind of your future and what you need going forward to be, you know, um, to grow into the business that you're dreaming of, like, you know, what kinds of things are you seeing that as a, as a small business, as an emerging business, um, what kinds of things do you need? I think, um, I don't know if I'm going to answer this right, but I think... Uh, There's no right. It's just whatever it is. <laughs> so this pandemic um, has uh, taught us a lot uh, in terms of... I'm very passionate about the environment, and that's why I am into circular fashion. And it's quite important to talk about textiles and how um, we can contribute to the environment by repurposing, reusing... Right. And all that. So I think we all need to shape our um, views and and um, and, be, and be more conscious about what we purchase and um, and what um, like all business need to be more conscious. I think like if you're an emerging brand, you need to to be more um, into that. Who made it? Um, what's behind your product? Why is your product like that? Why are you making this product? 
So uh, I think people is getting more sensitive into that. Uh, it's not the entire people, but the entire community, but uh, like it's getting there. And I think the new generations are more into it. So uh, definitely, um, I, I think uh, going into this path uh, will um, change our world and perception. And yes. um, I'm up to it, you know, it's just like, uh, if you see like not, um, with, with all these, uh, like the world just stopped and uh, there's a fast fashion issue. There's a lot of issues related to it. You know, it's like the production of new fabrics, the dyeing uh, of the dyeing of the fabrics, um, and and then there's a lot of waste. So um, I don't know. And then the transportation. You know, it's like all this pollution that the planes uh, and and and, and the, in, it's not happening right now. Right. So it's, just, it's just great, and and you see like. You know, it's just like the sea is getting out there better. Just this, this pollution in, in these cities. Yes. China, you know, just like these cities that used to be so polluted and then they're clearing out and uh, the, the world yes. is getting us something. So uh, as businesses, really we need to think about that and we need to think about how are we doing it. And I know that um, by not creating new products or just like recycling them it's challenging uh because it's tougher in the in the, the making um and uh it's probably more costly but at the end um i think we need to change our mind and say okay i'd rather have something high quality i mm-hmm. probably done uh, something cheaper and uh spend spend more dollars on that or probably the same amount of money but in yes. uh, high quality items. So Absolutely. I think for an emergent, uh, emergent uh, yeah, uh, fashion design and designer, uh, we should look towards that and be more sustainable and um, try to capture this consciousness of like this conscious uh, movement. Um, mm-hmm. I think the world is going there, particularly new, 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 new generations. So. I agree. I 100% agree. I honestly, I love the way you answer that question. You're like, I don't know if this is where you want me to go, but I thought that was perfect. Um, honestly, you're so right. Like we need a mind shift. And I think that this pandemic has given, given us all an opportunity to do that and to see the effects of having to do business differently and wanting to continue that. I think a lot of people are seeing um, so much opportunity, just the way that you you outlined it perfectly. So um, you know, I think that that's a really good place for us to end up. Um, I think emerging talent, you know, there really is room for you to grow here, even amongst this very challenging situation, you know, with, you know, what we're seeing with the virus globally, but there is an opportunity to stand for sustainability or higher quality goods, you know, and to be able to connect to people in an authentic way with what they actually need. And so I think that this is a huge change from where we've been with fast fashion which is just kind of throw out as many things as you possibly can and you know see what sticks you know and now this is you know no get to know your customer better you're gonna have to figure out that customer journey a bit more you're gonna have to understand what your customer actually needs from you so um pamela thank you so much for your time today um we'll definitely have the playback available on youtube live um, and we'll be sharing it through igtv as well in the future um, so, guys, every Friday we'll be here um, having interviews with some of our uh, incredible local designers, um, small businesses that are really making things work uh, during this time. So, um, thank you so much again, Pamela. Um, such a wonderful treat to have you here. Thank you. And um, absolutely, in classic childhood, um, many great years ahead of you. Um, so, um, where can we find you just so like, if we want to get, um, the buy to donate one, like, how do we find you for, um, you know, purchasing? It's uh, classicchildhood.com and we have in the, under the product, we have it under the future, um, collection. So you can find it there okay. or, or go to Instagram. It's, uh, at classic childhood and, um, there's a link in bio and, in Classic Childhood. We're Classic Childhood everywhere. Classic Childhood. Okay, great. Yeah. Wonderful. So we will look for Classic Childhood on all social channels. 
um, and give a follow. Um, it's, you know, Pamela's doing incredible work, um, beautiful product, um, but really meeting a need with children's uh, face coverings for the pandemic. So again, thank you again. And um, we will talk to you soon. All right, thanks guys.